Hey guys, today we're going to go over proving lines um, are parallel. So, unfortunately, we got to do proofs again. Luckily, this whole unit isn't all about proofs. In fact, this is the only time that we're going to do proofs for this unit. And then, of course, there will be proofs on your test, but it's not a full unit of proofs. So, this unit, we will be using the blue parallel and perpendicular properties um, flap on our foldable, but we will still be using all the ones before it as well. So if you click here, we need to go over some of these properties. And they're also listed here in your notes. So the first one says corresponding angles are, and then it goes on. So we'll go over that in just a minute. I want to make sure that you understand it in your foldable as well. So first it goes over alternate exterior angle theorem. Um, which just says that if you have alternate exterior angles, which you guys learned in a previous video, then um, those, if the lines are parallel, then alternate exterior angles are congruent. That's what it says. It, and then um, remember I had told you before, definitions can be set in reverse, but this is a theorem, so it can't necessarily be set in reverse. So what we have instead is this converse of alternate exterior angle theorem. So that allows it to be in reverse. So, okay, so let's go over here and just kind of see what it says. First of all, the alternate exterior angle theorem says, if you know they are parallel, then the alternate exterior angles are congruent. Congruent, not equal, congruent. The converse says is if you know alternate exterior angles are congruent, then you know the lines are parallel. And it does matter. You have to make sure that you use the correct theorem. Then we have the same thing for alternate interior angles. So alternate interior angle theorem says if they are parallel, then they're congruent. The alternate interior angles are congruent. And then the converse of the alternate interior angles says the reverse of that. If you know the alternate, al I can speak, alternate interior angles are congruent, then you know the lines are parallel. And then we have the um, same thing for corresponding angles. If you know the lines are parallel, then the corresponding angles are congruent. And we have a converse of that. It's just on the other side. So the converse of corresponding angles says if you know those corresponding angles are congruent, then you know the lines are parallel. So that's all of our congruent angles. Now we deal with the supplementary ones where we have the consecutive angles, consecutive interior and consecutive exterior. So consecutive interior theorem says if you know the lines are parallel, then you know the consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Not that they add to be 180, you know they're supplementary. So you have to say they're supplementary first and then go back to um, the segment and angle flap and look at supplementary and then using the supplementary, the definition of supplementary, you can say that they are 180 after the fact, but you have to say that they are supplementary first. You cannot go straight from consecutive interior angles to adding to 180. So what it says, just to reiterate, is that if you know the lines are parallel, then you know those consecutive interior angles are supplementary. The converse of that is if you know that the consecutive interior angles are supplementary, then you know the lines are parallel. And the exact same thing is true for consecutive exterior angles. So um, if you know the lines are parallel, then you know the consecutive exterior angles are supplementary. And then the converse is the vice versa of that. So if you know that the consecutive exterior angles are supplementary, then you know the lines are parallel. So that's every, all the properties that are in here. Yes, you already technically knew those from previous um, worksheets, but as you can see, this does have to deal with congruent angles, not equal, and supplementary angles, not adding to be 180. You have to make sure that you use it correctly. So as far as the notes go, I'm going to go ahead and make this one bigger so that we can focus on it a little bit more. Um, so in our proof foldable, it says corresponding angles are congruent. Then the, this actually has it backwards. This is vice versa. 
then lines are parallel. And if you know that the lines are parallel, apologize. If you know the lines are parallel, then you know that they are corresponding angles. So this is really backwards. This is converse. And then this is the if then. So in other words, if you know the lines are parallel, then you know that the corresponding angles are congruent. That's the original. And converse is if you know the, co the corresponding angles are congruent, then you know the lines are parallel. It's in reverse. Apologize for that mistake. But you do have it in the proof foldable as well. Um, alternate exterior angles, they are congruent. And the converse says if you know those are congruent, then the lines are parallel. And then the original says if you know the lines are parallel, then you know that the alternate exterior angles are congruent. Um, same thing with alternate interior the exact same process lines are parallel then the alternate interior angles are congruent now consecutive interior angles are supplementary they do not add to be 180 they're supplementary you have to make sure that it is stated that way then the lines are parallel and if you know the lines are parallel, then consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Two lines are perpendicular to the same line, then those lines are parallel. And it is a perpendicular transversal. all that means is if you have two parallel lines right and the transversal is perpendicular to both you know that those lines are parallel um, and if you know those lines are parallel um, then you know that the transversal is perpendicular as long as they form 90 degree angles or they are right angles same type of thing Okay, so how are we going to put this in practice? So if the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 2, which lines are parallel and why? So if these two are the same, remember that they always, both angles always have to touch the same transversal. So this angle touches this line and this line this angle touches this line and this line. The only one that they both touch is M. So this is the transversal. Because it's the only one they both touch. So because that one is the transversal, the line that they individually, the lines they individually touch, the one that each of them touch are the parallel lines. So R is parallel to S and M is the transversal. So if you know they are equal, then you know that they're congruent. But if you know they're congruent first, remember that's always the converse. If you know they're congruent first. And then these lines are corresponding angles. Same side skip. So converse of corresponding angles. All right, so now it says find ABC, which is this angle, so that M is parallel to N, which basically just means that if these two are parallel, then um, we need then the alternate interior angles, which is what these are, should be congruent. But we have to prove that they're parallel. We don't know that yet. So we will use the converse because we don't know they're parallel, we're trying to prove it. The converse of alternate 
interior angles. That's technically what we're using to prove this. And y'all have already done this type of math. You set them equal to each other and you solve. So 6x minus 20 is equal to 3x plus 10. Subtract 3x from both sides. 3x minus 20 is equal to 10. Add 20 to both sides. 3x is equal to 30. Divide by 3 on both sides. And x is 10. So we have to figure out what the measure of ABC a, is. So the measure of angle ABC. It'll actually be the same for both, right? Because they're equal. So you could plug it in either one. It doesn't really matter. But. So the measure of ABC is 60 minus 20, which means that the measure of angle ABC is 40 degrees. And again, we use the converse of alternate interior angles to figure that out in order to prove you don't know that they're parallel. So we're proving they're parallel, which means it has to be a converse. All right, now we got to do actual proofs, which means I need my proof foldable back. Okay. So we have statements and reasons. very first thing that we can write is that angle one is congruent to angle two and that angle one is also congruent to angle three and that's given. So we are trying to prove that two lines are parallel. We know that these are congruent and we also know that three is congruent. Our goal is to prove that AB, which is this line, is parallel to DC, which is this line. So if you extend it out, it'll look like this. And now it looks more like what y'all are used to. Um, you can actually ignore the one. It doesn't have anything to do with this. It's really just extra information. You don't really need it besides the fact that um, you're going to have to use it in order to just prove that one and, that two and three are congruent. But otherwise, as far as the way the picture goes, you don't really need it. You just need it for like the algebra type part. So our second thing we want to do is if you look, angle one is congruent to both angle two and three. So we can use substitution. Remember, we can't use transitive because it's not in the right order. If, it, if this first one would have been flip-flopped, we could have used the transitive property, but it is not flip-flop. So we're going to use substitution. So we're going to substitute angle two for the measure of angle one. So in other words, we're going to replace this one here with the measure of angle two. And so that's substitution in step one, and that's my green highlighting part. Okay, now I know two and three are congruent. So if you look over here, that's alternate interior angles. So which one do I use, the top one or the bottom one, whenever I don't know they're parallel? I'm trying to prove that they're parallel. That's my goal. So which one tells me that the angles are congruent first? So that's this middle one which is the converse of alternate interior angles. So we can say that AB is congruent to, I'm sorry, not congruent, parallel to DC. And that's the converse of alternate interior angles. Oh, I need to change that. abbreviation it needs to have co and v in the front because they both both abbreviations are the same i will fix that on y'all's proof foldables okay so next one statements and reasons so 
So first of all, let's list our givens. It says angle one is congruent to angle five. And angle 15 is congruent to angle five. And we have to prove two things. We have to prove that L and M are parallel. And then we have to prove that R and S are parallel. So um, you can choose to do this as two separate problems or kind of approach them at the same time. And you can do it either way. It doesn't really matter. Um, it just, if you do them at the same time, it's less steps. If you do them separately, it's more steps. That's really the only difference. So first of all, we say that one and five are congruent. So because one and five are congruent, we can say that L and M are parallel because of the converse of consecutive, uh, not consecutive, converse of corresponding angles. And then next, and that's using this part we can do because of these guys. Then the next one says that 15 and five. So here's five again, and here's 15. So now we can prove that R and S are parallel because of the converse of alternate exterior angles. Which is the pink part. And that's the end of your notes today. We will go over the practice for this tomorrow.